Good evening. Welcome to Rhythms of the Culture. I'm Raymond Lawrence. And on this program, we have a special guest, that's Jennifer White. She's a former Chief Personnel Officer and Permanent Secretary in the Public Service and also a true cultural stalwart. We're going to take a break and come back in just a moment to begin our conversation with Jennifer White. The first edition of Rhythms of the Culture in this very new television program, we'll be highlighting various expressions and aspects of Dominica's culture. Okay. Um, Tassi, let's start off with you giving us a bit of your background for persons who don't really know you like that well. Uh, where you were born, where you grew up, where you went to school. So, Ophelia, you've performed in just so many places all over. Um, what are some of the performances that stand out in your mind as probably the more memorable? Now, all in you traveled with the People's Action Theatre um, through the Caribbean. You mentioned a couple of islands and Caribbean countries that you traveled to. first edition of Rhythms of the Culture. In this very new television program, we'll be highlighting very Welcome back to Rhythms of the Culture. We have with us on this program, Jennifer White, a former Chief Personnel Officer and Permanent Secretary in the Public Service, and also someone who has been very, very much involved in cultural development in Dominica. Jennifer White, welcome to Rhythms of the Culture. Thank you. Yes, Jennifer, you've had a long and very outstanding history <laughs> in the public service. Um, let's start with that one. Can you give us just a brief background of your involvement in the public service? Yes, I spent 33 years in the public service. I began uh, from the, what is called from the bottom as a substitute and ended up as a permanent secretary. In between that, I was the clerk of the House of Assembly for some time. Among other positions held were assistant secretary, chief technical officer, permanent secretary of the Ministry of Education. At that time it was with sports and with affairs, and eventually chief personnel officer. And on my retirement, I was appointed Deputy Chairman of the Public Service Commission. Mm -hmm. Of course, I acted in several ministries. Luckily, I acted as Cabinet Secretary and Head of the Public Service. I also acted as PS in ministries of social services, communication works, and also in education before I was appointed. So I think I touched almost everywhere. <laughs> I was an audit officer too. As time. well. <laughs> but you've certainly had a very um, illustrious career in the public service. And Jennifer, we have to congratulate you for your contribution to Dominica's development. And not just in public service, but also in the area of culture as well. And we'll come to discuss that in a short while. But when you look back on your career in the public service, there are so many outstanding moments, I guess. <laughs> but what is it that sort of maybe stands out in your mind? What do you think maybe were your greatest moments of satisfaction within that long career of yours in the public service? Um, one or couple I can see is when I went out and came back with ideas that were accepted by the administration. And I can think of two in particular. When I came back from England, I had done a course in public accounts and audit. I introduced bank reconciliation in the Ministry of Education while I was the accounts officer there, officer there. So I found that was an achievement. But even more significant is that I introduced as chief personnel, personnel officer the idea of a public service week. And it is still being observed today, it has been cut down now to, I think, Public Service Day, but then throughout the year the activities 
leading up to that public service day. And the first one was done in 1999 under my directorship. And I feel very proud that we were able to make civil servants feel good about themselves and have the public have an idea of what was happening in the public service. So these are two of the achievements I think I have had. In the yes. And you're out of the public service now, but if I were to ask you if you had a word of advice for public service development today, what would you want to say to them? I would say training, training, and more training. <laughs> because I think my achievements were such that I can say training had a lot to do with it. I got a lot of training at every stage of the public service. And particularly, I think we need training at the PS level. Because um, permanent okay. secretaries have such a great role to play in assisting the ministers. In fact, one of the major functions of a PS is to advise the minister and to protect your minister. And I am not criticizing, but I think we need a little um, more to give the PSCs a little more to help them to be able to help their ministers a bit more. Mm -hmm. To me, I, I would advise that at the PS level. But of course, throughout training is necessary, mm -hmm. and especially to at the supervisory level, middle management level. In fact, I used to lecture um, on those subjects, leadership, supervision, uh, after I left the service, I was helping the government in that regard by giving lectures to, and I can see many of my people who participated and in fact, I meet them and they tell me that they gained a lot from the lectures and some of them have reached some very high positions of that I am also proud. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if we could see a little more training, especially at the high levels, we could do Dominica better. Mm -hmm. Now, apart from your work in the public service, you have also been very much involved in cultural development in Dominica for many years as well. <laughs> um, and I remember personally that you were involved in my sister's group, um, G my sister Jean Lawrence Matthew, and being director of the Sifla Motan Chorale. I was a young boy then, but. <laughs> Um, and that goes way back to the late 1960s. Right. But I know you were probably one of the founding members and first members of the group. And of course, you recorded with the group when the group recorded their albums. Take us back to that time and how you got involved in the Sifla Motan Chorale. Well, I got involved in choral singing uh, as a child because um, Anytime you have nuns teaching you, you have to sing. <laughs> so from primary school, which is the St. Martin School, it was then the convent primary school. Okay. We used to do choral singing. And convent high school, of course, uh, lots of that. We had a Greek club. And I was identified at an early stage as a soloist. And for a few years, I used to represent the convent at various competitions as a soloist, as part of a duet, as a trio. And I, we helped to bring the school right up. We used to come first most of the time. So I was recognized, my voice was recognized as being something special at the Conway High School. And when leaving school, I went to university, of course, and then I started my family. And so there was a love. But on my return to Dominica, Almost as soon as I landed, Jean Lawrence <laughs> was with, at me. And that was in 1969. They had already started the group and had performed at the 1967... Uh, 69 uh, Expo. The 69 Expo and also... I was at the Expo. Oh, you were there. But yeah, okay. at the 67 Associated Associate Statehood um, celebration. I think that was their first outing. And then, well, as soon as I came in, Jim called me and told me about that group. And my cousin was in it at that time, Jimmy, 
with Jimmy Rabbit, you know. Okay. And that was it. I never stopped from there. <laughs> so Gene used to really help us a lot with our voice training and so on. And we used to help her too because sometimes she's not so hot on the patwa, we had to help her. <laughs> and also in um, putting music to some of these songs, she would ask us, you know, opinion and so. And we had a very, very good rapport and you know that group has gone from strength to strength. strength yeah. We mm -hmm. recorded three <clears throat> albums and later on when Jean left and I took over, um, we had to change the name for various reasons, which I prefer not to talk about. Mm -hmm. But we changed it to Dominica Folk, Folk Singers and we continued to sing the Sipli Motain songs and other songs. And up to very recently, we were performing, but then you now people have other interests. And so the group has such a sort of um, mm -hmm. gone defunct. Okay. But we still <laughs> have our tight friendships. Mm -hmm. And it's good to see now that the Cicero singers are now in full swing because the leader, Pearl, she used to be a member of and the she Dominica came Folk out Singers. Of that experience. And she came out of that experience. experience yes. And the Cicero singers continue to sing Sipli Motai songs and also Dominica Folk Singers songs. Mm -hmm. And they're doing it so well. Mm -hmm. I'm really proud of them and mm -hmm. that they're continuing the heritage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So following the Sifla Motan Choral, after Jean Lawrence Mathurin got married, went off to Antigua, the Dominica folk singers. Well, I took was, over was Sifla Motan. We continued as Sifla Motan for a while. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. Until we changed to Dominica folk singers in 1981. Okay. Uh -huh. And we continued until that's about 2010. Or and so. the folk singers recorded as well. Yes, we recorded you have um, an, album. an album. We had done that mm -hmm. at Ken Robinson's studio. Mm -hmm. And all the albums actually sold very well. In fact, people are asking us if we could get them digitalized and, and so on. But all that costs money and time, and I'm not sure whether the interest is there yet. But mm -hmm. as you know, the songs continue to live on. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, while I'm at it, I may just tell you that the one thing I, I'm not too happy with is that the only time you hear those songs is that independent style. And after that, nothing until next independence so while the older folk they know the songs they know them word for word they know every line but the younger ones won't have an opportunity mm -hmm. to learn them and to absorb them but i am pleased to see also that the ministry of education through um, mr mervin alexander. alexander who is the music educator now he is trying to introduce into the schools programs some of the Sifli Motai songs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the songs are here to stay, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, we need to have more interest in it. Our local TV and radio program um, programming should include a little more of those songs so that um, they, they, will be continue, they will continue to be loved. And the younger ones, they like those things. Mm -hmm. So they will appreciate it if they're exposed to it. Mm -hmm. So that is what I would really like to see, the local programming to incorporate the Sifli Motai songs, the folk singer songs, and other local songs as well. Mm -hmm. Now in addition to the folk singing groups, uh, as I would describe them, um, you have also been involved in church choirs now as well, and, and not just as a member, but as also as director. Um, give us a sort of a summary of your involvement in that area. Well, the church goes back a long way also to school days when we used to sing. Well, we are, every first Friday we had to go to Mass <laughs> and we used to sing the Mass in Latin and all that. So we have that experience from school days. But on leaving school, I I'm pleased to say that I was the first um, director who was a lay person, first lay director singing or singing in the Catholic Church. Because in prior Dominica. to that, in mm -hmm. Dominica, because mm -hmm. prior to that, it's nuns who used to direct or priests who used to direct or brothers, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I was the first lay female lay person to do that. And it was 
through the introduction of the what they call the vernacular in the church after the Vatican II and then Pope John declared that mass should be said in the language of the people and so me along with my choir I along, I along with, my, sorry, with my choir we were involved in the folk singing of the mass and when in 78 we had our first independence celebrations Reverend Father now Monsignor Thomas he had some local songs which he wrote both in English and in Patois. So he taught the Patois to our choir, then the Zendal Ponsa's youth choir, and we in turn went around the country teaching other choirs, Brandy, Portsmouth, um, Souls, Bree, you name it. We were all over the island teaching, and now it's, you know, it's so well known, everybody sings in Patois, and right, every yes. occasion is done, but it was not always that way. Okay. We actually mm -hmm. took a decision to teach, and so we are happy to see the results. Everywhere mm -hmm. now, in every Catholic church, mm -hmm. you hear the local songs, English songs, people are composing more and more. So that too, I, we enjoy doing that. It was an outing for us, <laughs> and we were able to spread Passing the on gospel, the singing gospel at the same time. <laughs> yes, so yeah. that was a part of the church um, arrangement. Mm -hmm. And I was the leader or director of the first St. Alphonsus Youth Choir, and subsequently the St. Alphonsus Pop Choir, and until recently the St. Alphonsus Senior Choir. This is the Catholic, and prior to that, as a resident of Trafalgar, I used to be director of the Trafalgar choir, as well. choir mm -hmm. at one time. Mm -hmm. So much for <laughs> But my well, secular sure. ones include when the Cifle Motai, Dominica Folk Singers, singers yeah. and also what we call the Good Time Singers. That's a group of us who at Christmas time we go out to give Christmas cheer, and it includes some members of the singing stars like Norman Later and, and his wife Vali, yeah, violin. We have a whole Jonah Kazim, there's about 20 of us. Alwyn Bully has joined us, we say 20 or so. And we go around to different houses and sometimes around town singing Christmas carols and so on. So that is good times choir, so you know what yes. I mean. Uh, it's what we call water, <laughs> you know? So it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. So we're talking to Jennifer White, uh, someone very involved in culture in Dominica and a very prominent public servant in, in her day while she was a member of the public service. We'll be back in a short while to continue our conversation with Jennifer White. Back in a moment. The first edition of Rhythms of the Culture in this very new television program, we'll be highlighting various expressions and aspects of Dominica's culture. Um, Tassia, let's start off with you giving us a bit of your background for persons who don't really know you like that well. Uh, where you were born, where you grew up, where you went to school. So, Ophelia, you've performed in just so many places all over. Um, what are some of the performances that stand out in your mind as probably the more memorable? Now, all in New York, I traveled with the People's Action Theatre um, through the Caribbean. You mentioned a couple of islands and Caribbean countries that you traveled to. first edition of Rhythms of the Culture. In this very new television program, we'll be highlighting various expressions and aspects of Dominica's culture. Um, Tassia, let's start off with you giving us a bit of your background for persons who don't really know you like that well. Uh, where you were born, where you grew up, where you went to school. 
So Ophelia, you've performed in just so many places all over. Um, what are some of the performances that stand out in your mind as probably the more memorable? Now, all in New York, we traveled with the People's Action Theatre um, through the Caribbean. You mentioned a couple of islands and Caribbean countries that we traveled to. first edition of Rhythms of the Culture. In this very new television program, we'll be highlighting various expressions and aspects of Dominica's culture. Um, Tassia, let's start off with you giving us a bit of your background for persons who don't really know you like that well. Uh, where you were born, where you grew up, where you went to school. So Ophelia, you've performed in just so many places all over. Um, what are some of the performances that stand out in your mind as probably the more memorable? Now, all in New York, we traveled with the People's Action. Welcome back to Rhythms of the Culture. We're talking to Jennifer White. Uh, so Jennifer, you've been, of course, you've had a long and wonderful career. What are some of the things you are involved in right now. <laughs> I know you're retired and everything, but what is it that occupies your time now? Well, my mostly travel okay. to visit my children and so because they are all in North America. And it's, it's for one of those, it's for this reason in particular that I had to give up my spot as a member of the President's Foundation, which I have been for the past maybe, from its, its inception maybe about 10 years ago. I had to give it up this year because every year I go out for at least three months. Even last year I spent six months because of Erica. So I find being away for so long, it takes away from the contribution that I can make. But while I'm no longer a member, I have offered my help, my services, wherever I can. And similarly, I recently gave up also directorship of the St. Alphonse Senior Choir. While I still remain a member and I still help, because of that traveling business, I felt that um, I needed to give someone else a chance and to allow smooth flow of activities. But I am still involved in the Basic Needs Trust Fund. I'm a member, the NGO rep. I am also involved in Musical Melee. You know, it's a, a loose... Um, group but we have a production every year and I am involved in that. Also DADA, D-A-R-D-A, that's the Association for Reconstruction and Development. They are based in New York but we have a Dominica group. I am also a member of a senior group um, called Ask For, so I get to work with my colleagues in that area. So these are the activities that I am involved in. I've dropped off quite a few, as you can tell. But and of course, because of the contributions <laughs> that you've made, Jennifer, through the years, you have received a number of awards. <laughs> um, you probably wouldn't be able to go through them all, but uh, no. <laughs> which are some of those that stand out in your mind? Yes. Um, well, I've, had, I've received quite a few, but I'll just name that I received one from the government of Dominica for outstanding service. I also received recognition from the Cicero Six Form Singers as an honorary in 2007. I received the Golden Drum Award, of course, from the Cultural <laughs> Division. <laughs> and I, in 2009, the Cicero Award of Honor, which is the second highest award in the country, I received that as well, among others. I received from the church, I received from private companies, and I was, these were my personal ones, but I also received awards on behalf of the Dominica Folk Singers as well. Mm -hmm. Golden Drum mm -hmm. Award, and we got an award from the City Council, we got an award from Cable and Wireless, and I've had several church awards as well. So, it's mm -hmm. been a good 
Korean is a good feeling to know that you are appreciated. Yeah. Although you mm -hmm. don't do it for that, because the amount of enjoyment I get out of it, that alone, is ample compensation. But when you are re um, recognized by the highest um, entity, the government, it, it gives you a sense of fulfillment. You know that you have contributed something, that if and when I leave the world, I leave it a better place. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, Jennifer, you, you are someone, as we have spoken about, very involved in culture. When you look at the, the trends today, the influences today, generally speaking, in, in terms of culture, and I know that you have culture close to your heart, again, what advice would you give people generally in Dominica, young people in Dominica, um, with regards to safeguarding and promoting our culture? What would you want to say to them? Well, um, as you know, well, culture has different aspects. We have the performing arts, we have cuisine, we have language, we have the music, and so on. Well, my area, as you know, is the musical side, the singing side, and so on. And I have seen over the years uh, a falling down or falling short of the number of choirs and choral groups that we used to have before. But I think in recent times, I'm seeing a resurgence. Besides the Cicero singers, we have the Point Michel singers that are still around. We have the Pebush group. Um, there's a group I saw recently under the name of Leandra Lander, but I yeah, kind of remember Voidou. the yes. yeah. So if these people continue that way, I think we'll be OK. And also, I think the, um, Pearl Christian herself, she's involved sometimes in children's choirs. I see the education um, department as, well, Ministry of Education, as I said earlier, encouraging choral singing. Recently they had a boys' choirs festival, which I understand went very well. So it's not there. Mm -hmm. And what I'm seeing in recent times is good. And I can even stretch out my neck a little bit to say that the bands are doing quite well in the area of the bouillon and so on. I really like the bouillon, you know. But what I'd like to see in the bouillon is like, uh, is uh, greater attention being paid to lyrics, but like melody and rhythm, I, I, they're really good. They, and mm -hmm. there are a lot of bands nowadays too. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I'd like to see them also play some of our music. <laughs> you know, to keep it alive, the young bands that are coming up. So um, I see Cardance is also getting a resurgence, which is also good. So mm -hmm. musically, we are doing well. Mm -hmm. But we have to keep focused, because otherwise we will lose that great part, great contribution that Dominica has given to the world in the area of not only choral music, but also bands and so on. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to encourage him to continue and more participation, maybe by the younger ones and the older ones helping, helping them well. along. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So we're talking to Jennifer White. We're taking a short break and come back for the conclusion of Rhythms of the Culture.